G'day folks, today we're going to run through a couple of pointers on biofilters, moving bed bioreactors in particular, just to help a couple of people out. As the intro suggested folks, we will be looking at moving bed bioreactor today. It's a bit hard to see it. There we go. You can see the media moving now. The reason I'm doing this video is I saw a question come up today on a face palm group from Rhonda. G'day Rhonda and she was asking about the amount of biomedia needed to run a moving bed bioreactor. Uh, not only that, I commonly get asked questions about why I run a moving bed bioreactor in the first place. So we'll flip the camera around and we'll get into it. I was answering comments the other day and an old gem came up and that is why do I even use a moving bed bioreactor in my aquaponic systems? Seeing as I already have the grow beds, which are basically a large living bioreactor. Uh, they've got media in there that the bacteria colonize away from the sunlight and in the damp spots. And they grow the veg for us with some very sick looking basil because we're coming into winter. But nevertheless, everything else is looking fine. So yes, while I do have the biofilters, as in the grow beds, I opt to have a little bit of an extra insurance policy, which is the moving bed bioreactor. Just a bit of an explanation on the plumbing and how these guys work. We have the ammonia rich water come out the solids lifting outlet down through the delivery pipe into the radial flow settler. That takes out all the solids because you don't want the solids in the moving bed bioreactor. And then the water enters through one side and into the settler and then exits out through that little tea arrangement which you'll hear a little bit more about in a minute. Now as for what's churning the media, just it's a simple um, little air system, a couple of air stones on a length of pipe and I have that plugged into a compressor and just a little DIY valve setting here just so I can adjust the flow so it's not boiling too hard and knocking those bacteria off, just giving them enough oxygen to help them process the waste. Now the reason I have this here in this situation is because I run what is called a split flow or dual loop system. That grey hose there is the one that is coming up from the pump and I have it split. This branch here goes off to the fish tank and is delivered via Venturi to add some extra oxygen in there. This line here has a split here that goes out to the small satellite bed off to one side which was an afterthought so I plumbed in a little bit differently. And then I have this line here that goes out and splits just past that valve into these two grow beds here. My issue was because I had a inlet coming directly from the radial flow settler into here when I first started this system, the water rich in ammonia was being picked up and delivered back into the fish tank and I could actually detect ammonia going back into the fish tank. Now, that is not a good situation to be in because all you need is a pH swing or a temperature swing and that ammonia could be in a form that is toxic to the fish. So that's when I decided to pop in a biological filter to try and help process that waste from the fish into fish friendly nitrates before it was pumped back in there. As for why these split loop systems are good, um, I have them set up this way so I could basically turn off all the taps to the grow beds, uh, take them out, move them down the back, which I will be doing very soon, a video on that you may have already seen already, but there will be one coming to the channel. And I will have no worries whatsoever about these fish getting any toxic ammonia or nitrites back in there and knocking them on the head. Another case may be that you have a pest outbreak in your grow beds that you want to treat and you're concerned that what you use may affect the fish or the bacteria in the grow beds. Well, if that's the case, you can turn off those grow beds and you can rest assured that if you have sized your moving bed bioreactor correctly, that will be able to pick up the slack and process any of that ammonia and just have it running as basically a small aquaculture system for a small amount of time. So. That's pretty much well why I run these in the system. They're just basically a little bit of an insurance policy because the last thing you want to have is, yeah, all your fish, not that we're going to see them because it's a bit cold and they're down the bottom, um, keeling over with nitrite or ammonia poisoning. Now, as I mentioned towards the start of the video, these grow beds are living biological filters. So you don't need one of these little jobbies here in every build that you make. 
because this one is a split flow, it does require some extra filtration. So I just thought I'd put that out there because there's always one or two wallies who say, ah, it's a waste of time to have them in there unless it's commercial. Um, yeah, no, you don't need them in every system, but it does help with certain designs. Now, to begin with, I did run a slightly different setup. I had the water coming out of the radial flow settler into a trickle filter. I basically had the water coming through some shade cloth, which creates surface area to process the ammonia, which was fine when the fish were small. Then I graduated up into a pack of the same media that is in the bioreactor here. And then eventually I decided that wasn't doing a good enough job. So I graduated back up into this unit here, which by the way is slightly undersized. So yeah, that's pretty much well why I've set up this moving bed bioreactor and have it in the system. Very long winded explanation. I've actually had a few questions about setting up biofiltration and radial flow settlers over on my Backyard Aquaponics Beginner's Guide. Links and a bit of a spruik coming up for that. I won't bother you with it now. Uh, but I had Tyler asked me about setting up moving bed bioreactors and radial flow settlers. So one of the things you can do on the guide, rather than me sitting there and try and type it out, I can film a video explanation of what I want to help him with. So I knocked one together for Tyler and I thought I'd share that with you now because it actually goes into a bit of an explanation on the um, filters arrangements, the solids, as well as the moving bed bioreactor and how they're plumbed up. So we'll cut to that and I'll see you again in a tick. As for the moving bed bioreactor, well, this one here is very much undersized. Oh, just to give you a bit of a heads up on retention time, and because you do have that larger um, fish tank, it's about double the size of this one here in volume. From memory, I think you said it was 500 gallons. This is around about 250, 260. Uh, it, it means that you won't have as much time or retention time in that solid settler. The water will be moving fairly fast if you are turning over the uh, water uh, once, uh, once to one and a half times an hour. Just to give you an idea, this one here is roughly 1500 litres an hour, I think, and it was around about a six minute retention time. Now the same sort of rule of thumb applies to your moving bed bioreactor. You want roughly at least a six minute retention time in there. So the bacteria have enough time with that nutrient rich water to be able to process the waste. As for plumbing it up, uh, I'm pretty happy with this design here. You could basically swap this out. Um, you could make this the outlet and that the inlet, um, like I did in my, my old one, or have the water delivered through the top here and taken off down from the bottom. So I can't pull this out now, but I'll try and find an old photo or a bit of video from when I put this together. So now I've got water coming in here. It's time to do the internal plumbing. What I've got is a section of pipe with slits and holes drilled in it and an end cap with the same. And this is just going into a T that will fit on the outlet. So all those little slits will just stop any of the biomedia going out. And on the top there, I've just got um, another little grate uh, that'll stop a siphon from initiating, um, lets air in there, but also stops any biomedia um, from falling through if it does overflow. It basically gives um, time for the water to move from the top of the pack here down through the, um, the media and then where it's processed and then out through the bottom here. Now this one here has under a three minute retention time. Uh, air wise, as long as you can keep it at a rolling boil like that, and you're pretty much all laughing. You don't want it moving too fast because it will smash all those bacteria off of there. You just want it rolling a little bit to um, help get that air through there so all the bacteria have a chance to um, get some oxygen. And also it does help to knock off any of the loose solids uh, because you will find there will be some fine solids that make it through your radial flow settler into the moving bed bioreactor itself. Uh, plumbing wise, I would suggest that if the tank uh, and the filter are going to be bumped a lot and the pipe work, probably don't go with a uni seal, go with a bulkhead fitting. These ones here don't leak at all, uh, perfectly fine because there's no weight pulling down on them. I've cut all the pipes so they fit nicely. Uh, you will have problems with uni seals if there's a lot of weight on them. They can turn to pull out if the uh, tank wall is a little bit too thin. A really nice thick tank wall here. I think it's uh, around about it's over a quarter of an inch. And these ones here a little bit under. You're sort of pushing the limit with the uni seals on some of these blue drums, but it does the job. Um, I have had problems with bulkhead fittings previously, getting a good seal on them. That's why I pretty much all went to the uni seals. Now, anywhere where you want to be able to take pipes off or filters off, I would recommend you use something like these rubber sleeves 
uh, just some um, stainless steel clamps on the rubber sleeve there. Uh, it also means you don't have to cut pipe lengths exact. This one here has got a bit of a gap in here, you might be able to see just there, probably around about a oh, half inch uh, worth of gap in between the pipe. And yeah, it just makes it uh, sit a little bit easier and also too if the levels are slightly out between the two uni seals here, there's one here. Um, it just helps compensate that um, because there's a little bit of flex. If you do have any more specific uh, queries, let me know. Uh, just leave them here and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. So that guide, folks, is still available. 1995 US and there may be a little discount code that scrolls across the bottom of the screen at some point in time. The, not only can you ask me questions, but it's already chocked full of content. It's got everything from how, what is aquaponics to how to build your own system, um, grow bed stocking rates, how to build your own solids filtration, a couple of them in there. So well worth checking out if you're new to aquaponics and want a bit of a leg up, a lot cheaper than the other bits and pieces you'll see online and very straight to the point. And I won't be spamming you with any uh, reminder emails or anything like that. Totally online, by the way, and interactive. You can ask her questions and all that sort of jazz. But I'll pretty much will leave that spruiking there. And we'll pop back around to my uh, moving bed bioreactor and answer a couple of other questions. So Rhonda was asking this morning, and I didn't cover it in that other video clip we did. Um, by the way, g'day Rhonda, who was over on Facepalm, and it's already been answered, but I thought I'd include it here. Rhonda was wondering how much of this media we actually need to keep the fish waste processed. Well, in my case here, I'm in the subtropics, and it pretty much all goes for the same for the temperate to the tropical zones. One litre, or about a quart of this stuff here, this is the PEO3 Biomedia. It's a little five-spoke wheel. I think it's K2 in another brand. Uh, we need about a litre or a quarter of that to process the waste from the amount of feed given to a fish at harvest size, which is roughly around about 500 grams or one pound in weight. Now, there are some uh, more in-depth equations, uh, mass balancing equations that uh, commercial folks will use and even folks with larger backyard aquaponic systems than this especially those folks who run the deep water culture or nutrient film technique without any media beds. Um, but they involve basically knowing the exact surface area of these little fellas here or how many square meters or square feet of surface area they provide per cubic meter or cubic foot. And then they have to work out the amount of feed, the protein ratio of all that. And yeah, it's, it's pretty much all a little bit of an in-depth um, calculation to make. Because also consider all the inside walls of your drums, your filters, your fish tanks, your pipes, they also create a biological surface area for these bacteria to inhabit, uh, as do the roots in the deep water culture and uh, nutrient film technique. Now, along with how much media per fish, you also need to work out how much media you can have in one of these vessels so it will freely move. So when this media is brand new, it tends to float on top of the water but as the bacteria colonize these little wagon wheels, they tend to become almost neutrally buoyant and that allows them to basically tumble through the whole water column within the filters themselves. To allow this movement to happen, the churning, you probably don't want to pack any more in than about 50% to two thirds of the media. Keeping in mind, the more volume of media in there, the more air and movement you're going to require. Now in our old system, we used a Venturi and we had that running directly from an oversized pump and that helped churn the media. Not only that, but provided air for it as well so the bacteria could oxidize the waste. So I do hope this video has helped you folks out who did have a few questions about biofilters and especially the way that we have our setup here at the moment. Uh, keep in mind the system will be moving down to the new hoop house area in the next week or so. Fingers crossed we'll just see what happens with the farm hunt. And then yeah I'll have a different setup with the biofiltration down there and I'll bring you along to show you how that's going to be arranged. But anyway I will leave it there. Thank you again to everyone who's supporting the channel by buying the Backyard Aquaponics Beginners Guide. Remember that little discount code if you want to pick up a copy. Also to thank you very much to those folks who come along every week and say g'day in the comment section. Love chatting to you when I get the time. And thanks again to all those folks who are supporting us on the YouTube membership platform and also our Farm Your Own Yard patron page. So I will leave it there. I do hope you're all well and happy and your own aquaponics is booming and I will catch you next video. Cheers folks and happy growing.